Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we've got a gear review for you. We're covering everything from new rods and reels to new baits and colors. Let's go. Tim and I love doing these buyer's guide series because frankly, we're tackle junkies. And there's two benefits to these videos. One, we have a great excuse to let our inner tackle junkies go crazy, right? Because we need to try all of this gear. On the other hand, we are able to save you an incredible amount of time and energy and money wasted trying to find the gems. Because in the bass fishing industry, there is constantly new product, constantly. And it centers around two times of year. It centers around the Bassmaster Classic, which just passed, and then in summertime, iCast. That's where the majority of products come out. Although anymore, it seems like everybody's cheating that system, dropping things at random times. You know, a lot of launches in January and February this year. So much new product has come to market. Tim and I really do enjoy buying as much of that stuff as we can get our hands on and testing it. And there's a lot of time lost there. There's a lot of money wasted there uh, because a lot of things that come to market, frankly, they're, they're junk. But every time we do it, every time we start digging, we find a new gem. We find something that makes a tangible impact in our fishing. It's not every product, that's for sure. But there's always standouts and that's why we do it we get to scratch that itch right we get to be tackle junkies we get to try all the things and then you guys benefit from that too because you don't have to go through that headache and you still get to hear what those gems are so today we've got a whole hodgepodge of gear here uh, we've got some new colors in some popular baits we've got some new baits some new rigging some new storage that's going to save you some money and then some rods and reels We'll kick this thing off with rods and reels. I've got this new cash in in my hand. This is the most uh, affordable of the rods we're going to talk about. So they're going to go up in price point as we talk about them. Uh, but let's kick it off right here. From cash and rods in their icon series, the first thing you're going to notice is the handle is purple. It's completely different. Here's the deal. Cash in over the last few years has built some incredible bait finesse rods or BFS rods. Uh, some of my favorites at any price point from anywhere in the industry. Uh, they've done an excellent job with that 610 medium light and that seven foot light. They're amazing rods, no way around it. Uh, in fact, many of you know, probably all of you know, my single favorite bait to throw on BFS or bait finesse uh, is from Mega Bass. It's the little Karashi. And that in the Icon series from Cash and that seven foot light is my favorite rod to throw it on. Well, that brings us to this guy. Tackle Warehouse exclusive rod. They built this four tackle. This is the 6.8 Ultralight. It's even softer. And I mean, it is a true ultralight, true ultralight. This thing is soft, super flexible, all the way through. I mean, it's crazy. And I really, really like it. I think this was the perfect balance to Cashin's offerings in that BFS category. Uh, that ultralight allows you to really focus in on hard baits, treble hook type baits, or true ultralight baits. A lot of anglers in the US or getting into the BFS thing. I mean, this BFS train is rolling and it is building up steam. And as that's happening, as more anglers are coming in, more anglers are diving deeper into the category and realizing how light they can go, how small they can go. And this 6.8 Ultralight is the perfect balance right there in that mid price range to help anglers do that effectively. Again, I think that was an amazing addition into that icon line. And I think it's awesome that they did a Tackle Warehouse exclusive. I've been throwing a ton of that pink braid lately. You guys have probably noticed. I don't know why I got hooked on it last year. I've put it on all sorts of stuff and it's super matchy to that purple handle. Uh, but that's neither here nor there, right? But the actual 
fishability of that ultralight is amazing. Now in the video description, if you guys aren't familiar with our, our gear reviews, we will link all of the things we talk about. Um, so below the video, if you open up that description, you might have to hit more, scroll down, hit more again. You might just scroll down and see it there. We'll have links in the order that we talk about them to all of these items on Tackle Warehouse so that you don't have to take detailed notes like you used to have to take. It'll take you right to them. So next one up from St. Croix, we jump into this new line of rods. This is called Physics. And it is a complete turn in terms of what we typically see coming from St. Croix. Speaking to St. Croix as a whole, I love their rod actions. Uh, they make some very unique actions that you can't find anywhere else in the industry. Uh, some slower tapers, just some very unique things that work incredibly well. Uh, so I'm, I'm a St. Croix fan, that is not a secret. That said, every time a new line of rods comes out, we've got to have a look, right? And when they make such a drastic turn from the norm, we really have to have a look. So this physics line of rods, spinning and casting, and there's a ton of models, a uh, couple of things stand out to me. Obviously the handle, right? Completely different than anything else we've seen from anywhere in the industry. Uh, and then the overall feel of the rod, and we'll come back to that. So let's talk about the handle first. This is a carbon fiber handle, not like a woven carbon fiber, no. not a woven carbon fiber. It's a molded carbon fiber. Very interesting, super rigid handle that is supposed to translate a, a ton of sensitivity, transmit, sorry, not translate, transmit a ton of sensitivity from that rod blank into your hand. But what's interesting is its overall shape, sort of triangular. If you guys remember that the most recent rendition of the Mojo Bass line of rods is the Mojo Bass Trigon. And that was the first time that St. Croix has branched out and gone into this sort of triangular shaped handle. Now, I don't know that it's a perfect fit for everybody. When, when that Mojo Bass hit, Tim and I had looked into it. We saw what the company had to say about it. We fished it ourselves. We saw what other anglers that we trust had to say about it. But I'll tell you what, what that company talked about is how round reels, or I'm sorry, round handles don't actually fit the majority of humans' hands properly. That most people, when they close that hand, it's a triangle. I'm sure that's not everybody, but I will tell you what, the first time I did it, <laughs> would you look at that? It's a triangle. These things fit my hand perfectly. I have way more contact to the blank on this than, or to the handle, not really to the blank, but more contact points on the handle with this than I do with something that's round, which is really interesting. Uh, so at least for me, this fits very comfortable and I get what they're going for completely. And frankly, going in, I was super skeptical. The first time I picked one up and then I looked at my hand, picked it up again, like, wow, I, I feel like that, that speaks to me. In that Mojo Bass Trigon, uh, that is a lower price point rod. Here, where they've gone to that molded carbon fiber, I feel like they've taken this concept to a whole different level. Uh, it's got TPE material molded into it, which is essentially going to make it more grippy. It's got these grip lines molded into it. So it's very comfortable, sticks in the hand really well. Uh, I will say I'm very impressed by this overall. The biggest thing that I noticed is one, sensitivity, but two, balance. And balance is everything in rods. A lot of people talk about lighter weight, lighter weight, lighter weight, and we do too, right? I mean, we talk about an NRX Plus from G Loomis being the gold standard of an ultra light rod and everything gets weighed against that. Uh, and it's just shocking when you pick one of those up, how light it is. When I pick up this physics, I'm, it's light but I'm not mind blown by how light it is. It's just light. But what I'm amazed by is the balance because when you get really light rods, 
sometimes when you start trying to pair those to reels, the balance is wonky and the overall experience isn't 100%. I really like the balance here. Uh, the actual fishability, how this is transferring into my actual fishing is very impressive. Uh, all in all, I think they did a great job with it. It is such a turn from tradition, you know, completely different styling, completely different look, completely different feel, but I think they did a good job with it. And I will be very curious to see if these concepts continue to develop into the future. One other thing you'll notice, there's a trigger in the back. Concept being when you cast this thing, two hands, you've got a trigger back here to hold on to, and it's going, they say, to help you with accuracy. You're going to be more controlled when you cast that thing. I've fished them a bunch. I can't say that that has like leapt out. Well, I, I feel like I was accurate anyway. That's, I mean, that's a brass tacks. I already felt like I was accurate, but it's definitely not taking away from me at all. I don't mind that it's there. I don't dislike it whatsoever. Uh, and I feel like maybe it will help some people significantly, uh, but that remains to be seen. But overall, these physics rods, they're like high 300s, I think. This is not a budget rod. This, they did a budget rod, right? Mojo Bass Trigon uh, is an affordable, uh, beginner, mid-priced angler, tournament angler, very comfortable price point. This is a step into high-end, taking those same concepts into a true high-end rod with true sensitivity. And the sensitivity here, here is significant. Uh, this handle is super rigid, it's carbon fiber, it does a very good job of transmitting sensitivity from the blank to your hand. So the sensitivity is phenomenal and the comfort in my hand is amazing. The fishability is amazing. I think they did an excellent job of taking those new technologies and moving them up into a high-end line of rods. And I look forward to spending more time with these as time goes on. All right, next up from G Loomis, We've got the new, completely revamped, redesigned line of GLX rods. Now, going into this, I was already a huge fan of GLX. Uh, I own too many GLXs, so I have dove in pretty deep to this new revamped series. And I'll just tell you flat out on the front end, super impressed. Uh, I love G Loomis rods. I love the feel, I love the vibe, and I feel like these new GLXs have captured everything that is G Loomis extremely well. Uh, American made rods, and you know what, actually, let's back this whole train up. Let, let me say this really quickly. American made rods built in the US, full, uh, limited, whatever that means, but a lifetime warranty on those rods. Uh, to the original purchaser. So backing that up, the St. Croix, the physics, American made rod, that, it's super important. And somehow I just completely glazed over that. An American made rod, 15 year warranty, transferable. So like you could even sell it to somebody else, they still get that warranty. And then back to Cashin, American made rods, all of these completely unintentionally, all American made rods, uh, and here again, limited lifetime warranty. That was a critical component of all of these rods that I'm almost completely missed. Uh, so back to GLX, built in Washington state. Uh, and the second I saw them, I looked at this and went, I feel like I know what Loomis is up to because it is such a throwback to the old IMX rods in terms of styling, the look, the feel. Uh, it's a true Washington State built rod. Uh, and I think they did such a good job with them. I was already a GLX fan. I'm blown away by these. They are extremely light, extremely sensitive, uh, custom CI4 plus reel seats, 
And probably the neatest thing that I saw in this lineup, I noticed right away when I started purchasing rods and I was looking through what GLX had available, that there are a bunch of rod actions and models that are not in the rest of the G Loomis line. I've been super impressed by the bladed jig rod. Uh, and in fact, I've been throwing a spinnerbait on it a bunch too. Super impressed with that. But they've got an 892 in spinning. The two in spinning that stood out to me the most are the 892 and the 891. So in NRX Plus, you know, the 901 and 902 are just, I and mean, those are like world famous rod actions. They are so special. They are so sought after. Uh, that 901 in particular is just such a dream of a rod. Uh, but it's also very limited in application. And I think that the 891, which is just a little shorter, gives it more crossover. Same with the 892, more crossover uh, into more environments. And what I essentially what I'm dancing around is like the 901 is one of Tim and I's favorite rod models of all time. But I'll tell you what, that thing. I hunt giant smallmouth with it. And when I'm not up on the Great Lakes hunting giant smallmouth, it spends most of its time on the rack because it's so specialized. Whereas the 891, I feel like has more crossover into things I'm gonna do on the Tennessee River and other places, spotted bass fishing, largemouth fishing. So I think that was really smart that some of these models are different. Uh, I, have, I keep hearing good things about the new jerkbait rod. I've already spent a bunch of time with GLX, with a handful of them. Um, I just got that jerkbait rod, but I have not put it through the paces yet. So I can't speak to that yet, but you better believe I will. Uh, but overall impressions, I think Loomis knocked it out of the park with these GLXs. Uh, they, the price is not for the faint of heart. They're in the 500s. It's a high-end rod. Uh, but if you are a G Loomis fan and you just want to know, you know, was it done right? Am I going to like it? Is this a place I want to put my money? I think GLX just made a serious move up. And like I said, I was already a serious G Loomis fan or a serious GLX fan. Uh, I got several of my favorite MBR actions right away. I had to try them. I had to know, you know, I've got one sitting here, of course. The 843C MBR, the 844C MBR, two of my most universal rods that I use from any company, period, in the entire industry. Some of the most universal rods I own, uh, and I'm very, very impressed. And I was afraid because anytime a change is made, like the 843C MBR is my favorite topwater rod, period. Walking baits, favorite rod. So when there's a change made, one, I have to buy it because I have to know. But two, you're just like, please don't mess it up. Please let the new one be as good as the old one. Because if I break my old one, I'm gonna get a new one. Please be there. And I've, I've been super impressed. With that, we end rods. And that brings us to this reel that I have on here that I have been playing with on this 844 CMBR. I've also been using it a bunch on the bladed jig rod, trying to get to know this reel. This was launched prior to the Classic, uh, but it took me quite a while to track one down, but I have now put this thing through the, the paces. This is from Shimano in the Metanium DC line. This is that Metanium A, the new 70 size DC. Uh, first impression, absolutely love it. I like the DC reels. I don't use them as much as I use MGL spools because personally, I love to really dial in my reels for absolute maximum casting distance. But there are times where DC, and DC is digital control. So essentially, this reel is making thousands of micro adjustments to spool tension while you are casting. What that translates to is, uh, for a beginner in some of the more budget DC, if you're a beginner, it makes casting so much easier. I mean, these things can be set where they're almost impossible to backlash. So for a guy getting used to a bait caster, you can get yourself a DC reel and just go and you can enjoy all the benefits of bait casting without some of the headaches. 
as you move up in price point, they get more refined. They're definitely not for beginners anymore, but they're still, you get all of that comfortability, uh, that easy fishing, if you will. I was super excited to see DC come to the US in a 70 size. The reason why is that a lot of my uh, power fishing, a lot of my fast moving fishing, covering water type techniques, uh, I do on a 70 size reel. I use a ton of Corrado 70s. I also use the Aldebaran 50s, but I like those downsized reels. I like the way they fit in my hand. The comfortability is amazing. You guys have heard us talk about the SLX 70 as well, how much we like that reel. So I had to try a 70 size in DC and point blank, I absolutely love it. I am super impressed, so much so that I got another one uh, because I have several high-end applications. You know, I'm not gonna pair this onto a budget rod. This is a pricey reel. It's a high-end reel, but I had several high-end applications where I instantly was like, this is everything I hoped it was going to be, and I need another one. Uh, I love to use DC myself for anything that can be difficult to cast. So I'm not a beginner by any means, but I still appreciate not blowing up a reel constantly. So techniques like spinner baits, chatter baits, things where you turn and throw them into the wind and they stall out your real just grenades, right? That is so frustrating. So techniques like a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a buzz bait, uh, some cranking applications, anywhere where one cast it's gonna shoot like a bullet and the next cast it's gonna spiral and mess up and blow up your reel, those are applications where I really see advantage in DC technology. So for me, um, I'm throwing spinner baits and chatter baits on these because uh, I throw those on lighter braid, like this is 40 pound braid that I have on here. So even though it's a 70 size reel, I have a ton of line capacity when I'm throwing that thin braid. Um, so I get all the benefits of that smaller reel, fast startup inertia, the benefits of the DC on a compact package that fits so well onto some of my favorite rod models of all time. And that overall package is just seamless. Uh, rave review of that reel. And again, I'll be linking all this stuff in the, in the video description for you. That reel is not for everybody. It is a pricey reel, but if you like DC reels, uh, you like smaller profile bait casters, and you're curious about whether or not that new 70 size DC is worth it, it's worth it. All right, with that, we're gonna jump into the rest of this stuff. We're done with the high end stuff now. Uh, let's jump right here, Busby. You guys, if you have not been living under a rock, have probably seen somewhere in a video in the last year or two, how much I use these quick cubes. Busby makes these quick cubes, they're soft, like water resistant bags uh, that have made my tackle storage life so much easier. In fact, I'm gonna pop a locker and show you what I mean. I use these things non-stop. Storing swammers in there, storing chatterbait trailers, full of spunk shads, right? Here's one full of mag drafts. I carry a lot of soft plastics, a lot of swim baits, things like that in the boat. And it's hard to keep that stuff organized. In the past, I would just have a rod locker just chock full of bags of plastics and you're just in there digging. That'll drive you crazy. It's loud when you're digging around. It's a pain when fish are blowing up and you need another bait and now you can't find it. So years ago, I started organizing soft plastics, but it was always hard to find the right solution. And I have been blown away by these quick cubes. Now, with that said, they are fairly expensive. They're super nice. They're super durable. And they have a price tag that, that matches that. So I was super stoked. All of that was to say 
that now there are these quick cube breeze. So it's mesh. It's, this is a mesh material. No longer waterproof or water resistant. Water could go right through these. But these are way more affordable. A uh, significant step down in price compared to the quick cube. So I keep electronics in these, all sorts of things. But when I'm storing Senkos or creature baits or small swim baits, I don't need that to be in a waterproof container. A container that is lighter weight and breathable works great. I just need organization. So to be able to save a whole bunch of money off the top and still have the exact same organization, I mean, that's all the creatures that I keep on the boat. I just grab this thing, toss it in the locker, and I'm set. To be able to do all that and save a bunch of money is fantastic. So I think these are absolutely a winner. Uh, quick cubes are an absolute winner, right? They cannot keep those things in stock. I think the same thing's gonna happen to the breezes. I think those things are probably going to be out of stock all the time because it is such a good way to keep your stuff organized. They're lightweight. You know, we start putting that stuff in hard boxes and you add a lot of actual weight to your boat. Uh, or in the case of a guy on the bank, I mean, you can take all your soft plastics, hooks in package, pile all that stuff into one of these, throw that in a backpack and you're super organized. Uh, it doesn't just have to be on the boat. But again, that breeze version where you've got air passage through there, it's mesh, I think was a really good move. All right, next up, let's talk about a line. This is a cool one from Sunline. They just came out with this product called All Might. This is braided line. Let me pull it out. They make it in a, a high vis, a hot pink. They also make it in a, a very natural color as well. But I mean, you guys know, I've been personally, I throw a lot of those high vis colors and that, that pink, I've been throwing more and more of it with techniques where I want to be able to see my line. I throw a lot of green braid. Uh, you know, I'm not going to frog on a pink braid. I'm going to frog on a green braid. I'm going to flip on a green braid. Uh, fast moving techniques, typically those natural colors, but things where I want to see that line, you know, throw on a Senko, or if I'm fishing a jig on bottom, uh, or I'm mid strolling, things where I want to see my line, that high vis is so nice. And I just personally really like that pink or that purple. So this fits perfectly for me. But this All Might specifically, this is a sinking braid. And I think that that is genius because I think that probably one of the most misunderstood things in fishing is fishing line, right? We will spend astronomical amounts of money on boats and trucks and rods and reels and baits and then sketch out right at the end on line that we know nothing about or on hooks that you don't understand. I think when bass fishermen get down to the fine details, then they're like, well, I just want to go fishing. I'll just use whatever. But that's that last place that you want to sketch out. You want to know those fine details. So if you fish deeper water, Braid, I love braided line. I'm a braided line fanatic. Tim and I both fish a ton of braid. I fish way more braid than I do fluoro. Uh, but when you are fishing deep water or when you are fishing current, the amount of drag on braided line in the water is remarkable. And I think people fail to understand that. Let's say we're fishing 30, 40, 50 feet deep. Especially like all these guys on forward facing now, you see all the stuff with them out in open water. Like all of those applications would benefit from sinking braid because you fail to realize that when your braid is laid out on the water, floating braid, and your bait is having to pull that underwater as it sinks, it is pulling an incredible amount of line down in the water column. And it will absolutely change how quickly or slowly that bait will sink, but it also absolutely impacts your sensitivity because all of that water is resisting that line trying to float. 
So as it's getting dragged down, it's fighting back. And that impacts what you can feel and how you present your bait. And I think that is so overlooked. Now, with that said, I still do it all the time, but I'm aware of the problem. And this is a genius solution to that. So this All Might has a very high specific gravity. This line wants to sink. Do not throw a top water on this. Do not frog on this. Don't go flip hot pink line. It only comes in lighter weights anyway. This, think bait finesse, think spinning rods, okay? Lightweight finesse applications, open water applications, things where you want a straight connection to your bait. You don't want that arc in the water column as your floating line is being pulled down. You want a straight connection right to your bait. That's where this is going to come in. And I think that that will make a huge, huge difference for anglers that understand it. All right, next one up, let's do a bait. Let's talk a bait, let's talk old school. Let's go spinner bait. I'm a fanatic about spinner baits. I love spinner bait fishing. I am super stoked to see dirty jigs come out with a spinner bait. Spoiler alert, this thing in its infancy was designed like more than a decade ago. Uh, Tim and I had samples of dirty jigs spinner baits so long ago, I don't even know what happened to them, but it, it never came to market. It just never happened. And then fast forward, I mean, years and years and years, and now finally there is a true dirty jig spinner bait, and I'm super impressed by these. This is the Dirty Jigs Compact Spinner Bait. You guys know that I love smaller profiled spinner baits. A personal confidence thing, I think I get more bites in more situations on a downsized spinner bait. This compact spinner bait uh, falls in line with the compact jigs in the Dirty Jigs lineup. So, smaller overall profile, but still full size blade. Uh, excellent keeper on it, so barbed keeper. A thin, fine cut skirt, so you get more movement out of the skirt. Smaller wire diameter for more vibration. And then probably the biggest thing is just Dirty Jigs colors. Some of my all time favorite swim jig colors. I mean, Tactical Shad, a color that we designed a decade ago. Alabama Brim, my favorite swim jig color for imitating a bluegill ever made by any company. Now I can get it in a spinner bait. I mean, it's just such a no brainer. It's not even funny. I'm super excited to see that Dirty Jigs branched out, went with a spinner bait. Uh, I will, the one thing I will say, because this is a compact spinner bait, shorter shank took, you can throw it on lighter line. You'll get bit in more situations, but because of that full size blade, you see how far behind the hook that blade is. You see that? It's very easy to get a short strike here where they hit the blade and don't hit the hook. So either run a stinger hook, which I don't prefer, or do what I like to do, which is put a swim bait trailer on here. If you run this with a swim bait trailer on it, they will target the swim bait and they'll get that hook. If you fish it straight out of the package with just a skirt, no trailer, no trailer hook, you're going to have some fish that get that blade and they don't get that hook. So pairing this to a swim bait will make a huge difference for you. All right, another bait. Actually, let's do a hook, then we'll do a bait. These are cool. Missile baits just launched their hover missile. Hover rigging, hover strolling, mid strolling, bottom strolling, jigging minnow, Damiki rig, whatever you want to call it. This whole straight tailed minnow bait on a jig head thing is booming, as is hover rigging. Both of these things are just dominating bass fishing. Love it or hate it, it's just a fact. Missile has now designed a hover head, which is it's kind of nifty when you look at it. They took their logo, which is like a, a bomb or something, and they they built that into a 3D on that 
shank of that hook. Uh, this is designed to go inside of your soft plastic. So you run it in backward, you go in hook point first, run it down in there, and then once it's in the plastic, that flat face is butted up to the plastic and there is no going back. So it stays in extremely well, but even so, they put that pinhole, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, there's a pinhole through the lead and it comes with toothpicks so you can peg it so that it truly cannot come out of that soft plastic. But you hide this inside of your soft plastic and then if you're mid strolling, you know, shaking, you're gonna have super good movement. Um, if you're using a bait where you want more of that spiral death fall, it'll do that really well. I love the concept. I love that it's unique. It obviously fits the missile vibe, right? The missile baits vibe. But I love that they went with a medium wire O'Shaughnessy style hook. That is one of my personal favorite hook shapes. It comes in a ton of sizes, right? Right here, I've just got quarter, eighth, and sixteenth, but it comes in a ton of sizes. Like this little sixteenth, it's a little guy. But I love that O'Shaughnessy style bend. I've always felt that when you stick fish on an O'Shaughnessy hook, uh, it just holds them. Um, I love O'Shaughnessy bends when I'm fishing tubes. There's a lot of things where I like that hook bend. I think that was a great choice. And whoop, one of those was open. I think that was a great choice. Uh, and I think they did a good job of it. Definitely worth checking out if you're pursuing this style of fishing. One more bait and then we're gonna talk some colors to wrap it up. This is super cool from Damiki in their armor shad line. You know, the Damiki rig, essentially the rig that started this whole craze in bass fishing right now, all geared around that little two and a half or three inch armor shad. Well, they make that in a bunch of sizes. They also make it in a paddle tail version that we love throwing on A rigs and the back of spinner baits. We use it for a lot of things, but they just came out with their seven inch armor shad. Now, first thought, is actually not the most impressive thing with this, but let's talk about it first. The first shot obviously is mid strolling. Putting this on a lead head, throwing it out and doing the rod shake. It's that full profile, seven inch bait, fork tail. It's essentially a fluke style bait, right? Open belly, solid head. So you could fish this as a big fluke style bait. Uh, you can put it on the jig head, you can mid stroll with it, but the craziest thing, you notice how soft this is? Look, I'm just balling it up like it doesn't even exist. It is made of a crazy soft material. You take this and you put it on a weighted beast hook and straight retrieve it. I don't know if you guys have seen the viral videos that Damiki has been putting out of this thing tracking through the water, but this thing on a weighted swim bait hook just chuck and wind swims better than like every swim bait on the market. It's crazy, super tight action. Reminds me of like a perfect striper bait or saltwater bait that's now carried over to bass fishing. I'm picturing, I haven't even had the opportunity yet, but where I see that is like post spawn, shad spawn in a place like Lake Chickamauga or they're running gizzard chad and thread fins, that full seven inch profile is going to tear those fish up. But this thing is so soft. I mean, I could just ball it up like it's nothing. And as a result, it's got that perfect S that will just snake through the water just on a straight retrieve, just chucking and winding. So, so many different things that you can do with this. I think the timing is perfect to have another large profile mid strolling option. I think that's fantastic, but I think that's just the start of this bait. The real place where it's going to shine is throwing it on that weighted swim bait hook, which is super cool. And again, it comes in almost all of Damiki's colors and all of the bait fish type colors, they offer that new seven inch. Okay, now we're down to colors. 
Now, these did not come out at the Classic, uh, but, you know, middle of winter, we're not really talking about some of the, well, actually some of it we were, but I just never got around to it. Today is the day to talk about some new confidence colors that I've been super impressed with. Let's start with Mega Bass. From Mega Bass, we've got two. I love chartreuse. Tim and I both. We could be talking about chartreuse blue swim baits. We could be talking about a chartreuse frog. We love throwing chartreuse. One of my favorite places to throw it is in a jerk bait. Mega Bass has some incredible jerk bait colors that has sharp that have chartreuse in them. And we've talked a lot in our jerk bait seminars about how a color like matte shad will always help you identify whether dude, some fish just blew up right here, right next to the boat, chased the shad out of the water. If that happens again, I'm gonna make a cast. I mean, they were right here. We talk about how a color like a matte shad, so a super natural jerk bait, will get bit most often. And if you wanna find out if there's a jerk bait bite, a natural color like that is the way to go. But if you want to find the magic, if you want one of those special days You've got to try the bright, bold colors. They don't eat them every day. That's why we throw a matte shad or a GP pro blue because they get bit more often. But on the days where the bite is firing, you'll find out when you switch to that bright, bold chartreuse or white or pink or whatever it might be, those bold colors, if they will eat it, it takes the bite to a whole different level. And I was so pumped to see GP chartreuse, that GP chart back, chartreuse back in that 110. I mean, this speaks to me like nothing else. I look at this and I see the mouth of a five pound smallmouth. Like that's what I see when I look at that. That is such a deadly color. And I, I love that we're getting all the chartreuse without a bunch of it, of other colors. There's no blue in here, nothing like that. It's chartreuse, clear, pearl. I think that that was needed and I'm super excited about that color. And then the other one, this is Aurora Reaction. This color, you can get this in the Pop Max, you can get it in the Pop X. Uh, I love this. Again, chartreuse, top waters, Tim and I have said for 15 plus years that our favorite frog color of all time is chartreuse. Now, it's not the best color every day, same deal, but it's the best color a lot and it catches giants. I love chartreuse topwaters and I don't think there's enough of them. I love this color scheme. Bright orange belly shot, clear side, a little bit of blue on the eyes and then that bright, bold, chartreuse and you may think that the fish can't see the chartreuse on the top of a popper and maybe the way you fish it they can't but i work my popper sometimes i'm slow and methodical but a lot of times i walk these baits and they're rolling and twisting coming through the water and you better believe they're seeing that chartreuse I, again i think that's an awesome color these were just two mega bass additions that i had to speak on because i'm so pumped about them and I'm looking forward this coming year to really finding the right days where those two colors are crushing. All right, last but not least from Hog Farmer, we've got the Spunk Shad, one of the hottest baits on the planet. You guys know it's our favorite overall chatterbait trailer, not a secret. You also know it's one of our absolute favorite strolling baits. Put this on a lead head, fish it mid column, fish it on the bottom, put it on the back of a chatterbait and wind it. Two color additions here that I think will be major springtime players. You've got chartreuse shad and then this one, sunfish magic, is just a dream. Chartreuse shad, I mean, it's just such a fishy overall color. Again, chartreuse, that sort of blue pearl and then a true pearl in the belly with some silver glitter in it. It's chartreuse, but it's not overbearing. It's not electric blue chartreuse, right? It's a very neutral chartreuse. 
that I think pairs up to a lot of things well, especially when we get some of that murky water in the spring. You get a lot of those flows, you get rainstorms coming through, that water color's going back and forth. I think that's such a good option. And then that sunfish, I mean, that is such a bluegilly type color. Like all the glitters in the back remind me of tilapia. Whereas the belly color, that's all bluegill. And that blend, springtime, bass and bluegill are at odds. They are warring in the shallows. And I think that color is going to be such a player for so many people. So I just wanted to point out a couple of those newer color options. Again, they didn't just come out, but you might have missed them. And with that, we are going to wrap up this gear review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully something in here stood out for you. Like I said in the beginning, you know, so many products come to market this time of year. Uh, around the classic, around iCast, and just generally as we go through spring, we can't possibly get all this into a single video. We just can't. So you will continue to see gear reviews all the way through spring. There's a lot of other rods that came out, a lot of other reels that came out that are we're putting them through testing right now. BFS reels, new lines of rods, new baits, all sorts of things. I mean, we really beat things up before we will put a stamp of approval on something and say, yeah, that's something you should check out. We wanna know how they last, not just how they feel on day one. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff going through testing right now. We have been tearing some gear up, getting to know it, and there will be more gear reviews coming. So if there was something that came out at the classic, maybe, you know, Daiwa bait finesse reels, or a lot of you guys in one of our recent uh, BFS videos were asking about that arc reel. Uh, just know we are always testing everything. If you haven't heard about it, it's either because it didn't make the cut. We don't want to be negative. So we don't do negative reviews. We just show you the good stuff. If there's a gem, we tell you about it. If there's not, we just leave it be. Uh, but if you haven't heard about it, there's a reason. Either it didn't make the cut, or if it's new, it's still in testing. We're not, we're not ready to go there yet, but you better believe it's coming. So lots to come in future gear reviews. If you guys enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.